At the moment, the pack consists of six, and I'll start from the oldest down to the youngest. The oldest is Toto, who was here, and she was a little rescue dog from Spain. She's the oldest. She's the most loving little dog, but she's also a devil. I tread lightly with this one, but she's just, she's wonderful. The next one down is Ruby, and that's my husband's working Cocker Spaniel. Both of them are 12 years of age, with Toto being two months older. After that comes Little Man, another rescue from Spain. He showed up at the doorstep outside the house, and my neighbor had come over that morning and said, uh, oh, welcome back, and this little waif turned up, and I said, who is this? She goes, oh, just another abandonado. He lives in the campo, who lives in the countryside. So we took him home, and I proceeded to pull 30 ticks off of him, mm -hmm. gave him a bath, and the following day, I took him down to my Spanish vet, and uh, they, they said, are you going to look for the owner? I said, what owner? By law in Spain, they have to have a microchip. No microchip, he has no owner except me. Thus, little man came as part of the pack. The next one down would be Purdy, and that's the daughter of Ruby. Also a working Cocker Spaniel and highly prized by my husband. She's very, very good in the field. And after Purdy, we would come down then to Bonnie. Bonnie is another surrendered working Cocker Spaniel that we received in the end of January. Uh, she's one of the most highly intelligent dogs I have ever encountered. And then that brings us down to the baby of the pack, and that's Wally, my current Kerry Blue Terrier. Wally came to me in March at three months of age, and he's a joy. I've never owned a male dog before, and I had a lot of questions on Facebook, Vivian Flanagan being one of them. And I said, Viv, what do you think? She said, they're the most, they're more loving than a female. He's a joy. We are having one adventure after another. He's exposed to anything and everything that we do, I do. I adore him. He's wonderful. But then he fits right in with all the other Kerry Blues that I have had. He's had a good run this morning, as Peter can attest to. So he's a wee bit tired. But say hello to the camera. Hello. He's, I can do anything with him. He's the last thing I say goodnight to. I love you, Roger, my husband. But that's, dog people will understand this, but that's what it is. And he stays on that bed and he doesn't move until I take him off in the morning. And that's what we do. He's, um, he's learning every day what it takes to be in the pack. And he takes to it like a fish to water, shall we say, because it's what I want. It's what the pack does. If I say the pack's going in here, I'm with you. He doesn't question why, because that's what the pack does. And having a pack of older dogs is a life, is a, is a thank you from God, because he learns by what they do.
the Kerry Blue Terrier evolved over time in, in Ireland to be an all around farm dog. Since the 50s, 1950s, there has been a concerted effort to down breed this particular ferocity that they have bred it out all together? No. It is a dog to be reckoned with. It is a dog left to its own devices will rule the house. It doesn't take much from the time you have that carry blue puppy, if you're lucky enough to get a carry blue puppy, to teach it, uh-uh, I'm top dog in the house and what I say goes. They are DNA to obey the leader. For a rescue Carrie Blue, who has had a life that was, was either a family who couldn't understand it, and needed to get rid of it because it's too much a hassle. Why have a hassle when we can get something easier? Or a family that didn't know how to, ha how to handle it and were on the receiving end of a bite. This is why Carrie's coming to a rescue situation worldwide. And are all Carries going to be rehabilitated? Pretty much so. There'll be the odd character out. But in my experience, if you show leadership, it works. How do, how do dogs survive in the wild? Through leadership. There's only one leader of pack. If people would replicate that, you're going to have, through a Carrie Blue Terrier, all I can say is, hang on to your shirt tails because you're in for the ride of your life. I met Mark Buckley some years ago when he had a Carrie called Logan and my Carrie Blue at the time, Sasha. Well, had they not been altered, we always knew they would have produced the most wonderful of babies. And that's how I met Mark Buckley. And he's done such a job of bringing the Carrie Blue Terrier rescue into real worth. And of course, a lot of that is through Facebook. You know, Facebook can be used for a lot of different things, but it's also used as a great media of exchange of information, ideas, and things like that. Uh, Mark has been, uh, he, he's, he's had a few uphill battles, guaranteed, but he's done a marvelous job. And his uh, team, they've just been magnificent. We exchange ideas off of one another. We, we laugh, we learn together. And Mark has celebrated, the team has celebrated 100 dogs being successfully rehomed. And that's not always easy with a Kerry Blue. They, they're a wonderful dog, they're full on. And all I can say is once you've been touched by that magic of a Kerry Blue, other dogs just sort of pale into comparison. But of course, that's my private opinion. They work tirelessly to try and rehome dogs. I can imagine they get calls at all times of the day and night, and they worry about it, they agonize over it, and they rejoice on a successful homing. And it really, it really has knitted the family of Kerry Blue Terriers here in the UK. And that's down to Mark and his team, and I have, uh, the highest of respect for them. We have a lot of laughs and um, I'm always at their disposal for anything. And uh, Mark, it's been a great journey. Cheers. <laughs>